What is up guys, it's Awana Turtle. We're doing some more Magic the Gathering openings. We have 12 more packs of War of the Spark, the new set that just dropped. So far, I've been really enjoying it. And uh, in the first video, we actually got some really good pulls. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's really exciting. You pull a uh, Planeswalker in every pack uh, and they're not just mythics anymore, so you can get uh, like uncommon ones. Alright, uh, but all of them, like, there's a bunch of even uncommon ones that are quite good. So we're going to go through some of the commons to start. We got Bulwark Giant, Crush Descent, looking for some ones we haven't seen. That's a pretty cool one. Uh, Vampire Opportunist, wow, that's pretty creepy. Steady Aim, Band Together, Gateway Plaza, Trusted Pegasus. We have a Hualtes Raptor, Dread Melkin, 1-1 one, one for 1, Menace. Sacrifice creature, put, put, put two colors on it. Alright, so our first pack, we have a Sarkhan the Masterless. Very nice pull right there. For, oh my gosh, guys. This is like the most expensive card in the set, and we just pulled a foil. This is like the most amazing pack ever. Are you serious right now? Alright, let's take a look at what we have. Nickel Bolas, Dragon God. This is the big bad guy. Um, I feel like he's going for like 30, just a regular one right now. Alright, Nickel Bolas Dragon God has all loyalty abilities of all other Planeswalkers on the battlefield. Absolutely insane. He starts with 4, he costs 5, plus 1, draw a card. Each opponent exiles a card from their hand or a permanent they control. Wow. Destroy target creature or Planeswalker, and then if you can get to 8, each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature Planeswalker loses the game. What? Uh, so it looks like Nicol Bolas was able to become a god, and that is a godlike pull right there. We gotta grab some sleeves. Oh my gosh, that's gotta be the best card, best possible foil you can get in the set right now. Whew. Wow. And that was just our first pack, guys. Absolutely insane. War of the Spark is awesome so far. We got a Raging, I don't know what a crunch is. Battlefield promotion, giant New Horizons. Ooh, New Horizons. Uh, Avon Eternal, reminds me of Modern Horizons. Burning Prophet, Obnixus Cruelty, Jaya's Greeting. Totally lost, that's funny. Centaur Nurturer, Gleaming Overseer for a uncommon. Ugin's Conjurant, Obnixus, Nix Nixilus. And then, ooh, Bolus Citadel. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play, top, play the top card of your library if it's cast a spell this way. Pay, you pay half the equal rather than. Wow, that's crazy. You may play the top card of your library if you cast a spell. Oh my gosh. Imagine this for like a lands deck. Uh, it's really high. It costs six though. Alright, maybe not. Ooh, that's a cool. That's a very cool island. I like that. Yeah, that Bulls is Citadel. I guess it's cost way too much. Uh, but for any kind of like lands deck and legacy or something, it's like, you know, I just always. It doesn't even say once per turn or anything like that. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, I wonder if you can just like ramp up to it. Um, and then you just play all your lands. That's crazy. Ooh, that's pretty cool art. Demolish. All right, we got a cool celebrant, Pledge of Unity, Firemind's Vessel, and then, ooh, Vivian, Vivian Reed, Champion of the Wilds. Let's see, you may cast creature cards as though they have flash. All right, that's not bad. For three mana, we get start with four loyalty. The plus one. Um, until your next turn, up to one target creature gains vigilance and reach. That's terrible. And then minus two, this probably just looks for stuff in your library. Um... Seems pretty bad, but it only costs three, so eh. I have to imagine like almost all planeswalkers are just targets, so you have to knock them down. We got a cruel celebrant again, Jace's Triumph. Let's see what we got. Sorcery speed, draw two cards, you control Jace planeswalker, draw three cards instead. Um, God Pharaoh's statue. Oh, nice Nissa. <laughs> I said I, I read Nissa. I wanted to say nice the same. Shakes the world. Whenever you tap a forest for mana, ooh, wow, that's really strong. Uh, put three plus one counters on up to one target creature. 
non-creature land you control. Wow. Interesting. Oh, okay. That's what he means by shake the earth. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? An another, like a foil rare as well. A spark double. I don't think spark double is that great, but wow. This is just a such a good box. I can't believe the pulls we're getting. What a way to start off War of the Spark, guys. Definitely hit that like button down below. Show some love for these insane pulls. New Horizons. Alright, we've seen all these. We got a Merfolk Skydiver. 1-1 one, one for 2 flying. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus 1 plus one kind on target control. You can... Ooh, and it can proliferate. So, uh, that feels pretty good. And then we got a... I think we fold her before. And here we have a Finale. Finale of Devastation. So it costs green, green, X. Into our graveyard for a creature with converted mana cost. So it's kind of like a green sun zenith. If you search for... Hmm. Sounds like a just more expensive green sun zenith. However, it can pull from your graveyard as well. Wonder if there's applications for that. Skydiver again. Challenger Troll. Invade the city. And then, ooh, here we go. Ral, Ral Storm Conduit. Very cool. Whenever you cast a copy, cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, Razor deals one damage to target opponent. Yeah, he costs four. That's kind of, eh, scry one for plus two. That doesn't sound that good. And then a Callus Dismissal. Still can't believe that one pack. We pull the Sarkhan and then a Nicol Bolas foil. Absolutely insane. War of the Spark. <laughs> Very good start. Exile target permanent with command of converted mana cost 4 or greater. That sounds really good. We're putting this guy in the rare pile. Another as long with this one. That's this card sounds seems really good too. Just for two mana. Um, you can get rid of and the it, this so this works around indestructible uh, However, the player can choose whether they sacrifice artifact creature or planeswalker most of the time They won't really have much of a choice and then we have a Jaya Let's see what Jaya does if another red source you control deals damage to target permanent or player deals that much damage plus one To that permanent or player instead Cost five that is not good That's way too expensive solar blaze each creature deals damage to itself equal to its power hmm when is that a good idea if you're some kind of control deck that you have really high toughness creatures uh, otherwise why don't you just use a regular board sweeper not sure all right D spark sounds amazing again pledge of unity Ashiok this card's actually really good so let's see so basically you can't uh, search their library uh, and then for minus one target so this kind of just mills four cards and then exile each opponent's graveyard and it gets rid of graveyards as well uh, single combat for the rare and this is oops we are just getting monster pulls over and over again even in, when it comes to the uncommon slot getting all sorts of good planeswalkers the one I want right now is uh, Karn Sunblade Angel Domri's Ambush, the loyal companion, cute dog. Oh, Jace, nice. Oh, I so wish I got that mythic collection box to get that Jace. All right, so this is kind of like the Lab Maniac. Uh, if you basically empty your library, you win. And then target player puts top two cards from the library into the graveyard, then draw a card. And then if you can get to eight, draw seven cards. If your library has no cards in it, you win the game. Okay. Jace is always a popular one. So as far as pre-orders, the only thing I pre-ordered was a couple of Jaces and Karn's Bastion. I feel like the Karn's Bastion is going to be really good once the once the meta kind of settles in. The Wanderer. I have no idea who this is. Prevent all non-combat damage that you would be dealt to you and other permits you control. What? Prevent all non-combat damage. No, non-combat damage. Okay. Uh, exile target creature with power four or greater. Hmm. Oath. Of Jaya, so Jaya jo or Kaya, <laughs> Kaya joins the the Gatewatch, I guess. 
I guess that means she wasn't already part of it. Ah, I want to find out what the story is. Although I guess I'm so, I guess I don't want to find out that badly. I'm sure it's just a Google away. But at some point I will find out. Rescuer Sphinx, Interplanar Beacon, and then Domri Anarch of Bolus. Anarch of Bolus. That sounds like he works for Bolus, which is kind of interesting. All right, our last pack. We can't, <laughs> I don't even, let's just get a Karn, just a regular, we just, let's just get a rare. At this point, like, there's nothing can beat what we got in our very first pack. So all the other packs are kind of like, you know, the, the bar was just too high. We got a Bond of dis Discipline, I was going to say Disciple, Dread, Dread Horde Twins, Yang, Yang Yangu, the Wild, and then Enter the God Eternals. That's a cool art. These like army things are really cool too. Okay, what a monster opening, guys. Can't believe we pulled that foil mythic. Gotta be the best best possible pull in the set. The only one that might compete is Liliana. Um, so I I guess that'll be the next one. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, such an insane opening. Definitely hit that like button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe on your way out. Hit that bell for notifications as well. Uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of these openings in the future, so uh, stay tuned. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Wanda Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.